tour and the way for the light to come on. So it is, it is recording now. So this is our, our session for um, chapter seven um, called Crying Abba out of our book, um, A Praying Life. And uh, I'm you know appreciative that everyone who's here oh. has a chance to join in. And, and as normal, some others will come along the way. And, and, and like we said, some have contacted and said that they can't make it today. And I'm also, you know, excited to see we, we got a couple of um a, a couple of new names in the list that you guys might not recognize and, and, and Cassidy and 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 Bert and, and so some other ones might join in, but we'll we'll have a chance on the back end as we normally do to um to, to go around the room and so forth as we normally do. And so uh let us open up with a prayer and then we'll 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 just get started in our lesson. So Father God, we come before you now thanking you for this time. We thank you for those that are gathered in this place through use of our technology that we are able to come together to reason through your will and reason through your way and get another and better understanding and clarity of your word. We ask that this session go forward, Lord Jesus, that it touch the lives that it's supposed to touch and that it helps the people that it's supposed to help. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for keeping us. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray together, Lord. Amen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share out um, my, my screen, one of my documents here. And I just have to find it. And it's a couple of things we're going to share along the way. Actually, let me just share my um, desktop. And that might help us to get where we need to go. So let me know when you can see the um, the PDF that's showing right now. Yeah, I have it. Amen. And so if we look at our book that we, we've been going through, it's called A, a Praying Life. And the whole intent and purpose of the book is um, to, it's by the author Paul E. Miller. And the whole intent and purpose of the book is to give us another view, vantage point, another viewpoint um, if you will, ab about prayer. And what I like about this book is that it takes us on a journey from um, breaking us down into learning how to pray as a child and building us back up um, into that adult, if you will, that has a better relationship and understanding uh, of prayer. And so far, we've covered a few things. We, we talked about in chapter one, what good does prayer do? Um, chapter two, we talked about where we are headed through prayer. Um, chapter three, we talked about becoming like a little child, to, to go back to that childlike simplicity of our prayer. Um, chapter four, we talked about learning to talk with, with our Father. Um, chapter five, we talked about spending time with God, spending time in prayer, spending time getting to know our Father better. Chapter six was, was, was just awesome as well. We talked about learning how to be helpless you know, that we can take our issues to the Lord as we are, and we don't have to put on ears, we don't have to, to come a certain way, we can come as we are and learn to be helpless before the Lord, and, and that opens us up into a, a, a stronger relationship as we um, learn how to, to depend on the Lord. And so this next chapter, chapter seven, crying Abba continuously, it, it kind of starts to tie the pieces together in this first section of the book, which deals with learning to pray like a child. And so, you know, the, the, the notes that were drafted, um, I'll show them on the screen. And we'll just walk through the notes because through those notes, it'll get us to through our lesson and to the end of our lesson. And so um, when we deal with crying Abba continuously, we, we see that some, and, and if anybody has any like thing to say or whatever, you know, the way we're set up, you always can just jump in and, and we'll, we'll stop the discussion at that point and we'll reason together. Um, so don't, don't be hesitant um, if, if something comes to mind that you want, you want to share. But sometimes we find ourselves, in, you know, just, just dealing with life. We find ourselves in, in circumstances and situations where we just find ourselves wanting to and needing to call out to the Lord. And what's ironic and interesting is sometimes we might appear to be calm on the outside, and, but um, life's events have, a, have us captured, you know, in the moment. And, and there's times that happen when we actually, in a, in a silent prayer, you know, we start calling out Father, you know, Father, help me. Father, I need you. We might be calling on the name of Jesus. We may have a short phrase, 
that we we might settle into to to um to to get us to that point. You know, for instance, you might be in a in a in a meeting at work. I don't know. You might be in a in a trying situation where crying out loudly just just might not work. But you can you can have that silent prayer and and just lean on the Lord. And and we tend to do this um, when we when we're in a low place, when we need to reach a higher plane, when we we don't know what to do. And some of us have a a, a chant or a go-to phrase that that we might settle, you know, with us when we reach out to to the Lord. And then, then let me stop right there. Do do any of you have a like a short phrase or or something that you you call on, you know, when you have to have that short, quick, silent prayer? You know, it might be Lord have mercy or or, 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 or Father forgive me or, or whatnot. Does does anybody have something that? And I don't want to use the word that their go-to prayer, you know. Um, in that way, but that you know, that to simplify it, that's what that's what I'm asking. So I'm just throwing it out. Anybody? Um, my phrase is "It is well," um, like that song, the songwriter who wrote it is the hymn "It is well." So whenever I'm in a, a a tough situation, I remind myself that it is well because I got God on my side. Amen. I, any others? Um, mm -hmm. I have one, and I use it every day. I always say, um, even with stuff oh. going on, you know, I just say, um, Jesus, it's a good day. No matter what happened, it's a good day. Awesome. 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 And, and any others before I go on? I always say, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, I can, I can definitely um, relate That's to that good. one. Amen. <laughs> And so let, let's let's look at this question. Why do we cry out silently? You know, sometimes we find ourselves in in a, in a dry and weary land, and, and and you know, we may be in places or situations where our soul is just crying out. Our soul needs the attention. Mm -hmm. of the Lord. Our soul needs to be comforted. It needs protection. We 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 need to know that the Lord is there walking with us. We know the Bible t teaches us that we are never forsaken. But sometimes we need we we just feel we gotta call out and make sure, Lord, are you still standing with me? You know, and sometimes we we are in situations where it might it just might not be plausible, it might not be reasonable to 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 stop and, and pray out loud. And let me ask you this: what, what what kind of situations would you have in mind? What what situations come to mind that might not be um, times when you can pray out loud? Sometimes when you're at the doctor's office in the waiting room. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And, and yeah. remember, it's no right answer. It's just, you know, everybody got something good that they can add from their experience. So I, I agree. I've done that in the doctor's office for sure. Well, I do it, it every work. Oh. I pray uh, every time. I, I say it uh, every time before I go on a bike ride, you know, with, by myself or with a group of people. Amen. You know that that prayer protection, and and I I don't mean to say it like this that quick prayer protection, but that's what it is. That like, like Lord, I know you got me, so I'm I'm, I'm trusting you right now. Velma, I think you was about to say something. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, when um, people get on your nerve. <laughs> okay. And um, instead of you saying what you want to say sometimes you know i just say to myself jesus jesus keep my mouth shut jesus keep me amen and you know <laughs> i mean it, it's the truth i think we've all experienced that and we've all experienced you know each of the examples that that you all were so kind to share and it takes me back to our first section in, in chapter one where we were talking about what good does prayer do and we talked about you know, out loud prayer and silent prayer. And, and one of the people on the call at the time said that they never had heard of praying in silence and they couldn't fathom, you know, the possibility mm -hmm. that you would pray in silence. But, and we tried to go through an explanation of why sometimes that, that might be necessary, you know. So however you pray, the key is that you're praying. God is wise enough. God is strong enough. God is omnipresent enough to hear us when we call out, as the Bible you know, tells us to call out in prayer sometime. And he's also you know, omnipresent and strong enough and wise enough to hear us when we can't call out in prayer. And look at it like this. What about, what about the person that has a, 
a speech um, challenge, you know, maybe they might mm -hmm. be mute per, per se. They can hear, they can reason, they can do all the things, but maybe it's a challenge physically where they can't call out out loud. Does that mean that their prayer in silence is not going to be heard? You know, I, I can't believe that, that, that God will make us in a way where he can't hear our, our silent prayers. And there mm -hmm. are situations where I think um, somebody mentioned, well, what if you are in a, in a um, trying situation and you, you, you know, uh, like you get in um, some kind of negative thing is happening to you and all you could do is it just in your silence is, is simply cry out to the Lord. What, what, if, what if you got kidnapped and I'm really stretching here and your mouth is duct taped? you know, and you can't call out. For me, I'm going to be praying silently as loud as I can, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, you know. So don't discount silent prayer. And I like how, how, how in Psalm um, 63 and 1, how David said, oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. And so David wrote that psalm when, at, a, at a point in his life when he was desperately in need of, of being close to God. He needed to know that God was present with him. And, you know, he's talking about his experience in a dry and desolate wilderness um, and, and how he was without water. But he still had that thirst for God in his soul. And, and what he truly thirsted for wasn't physical water. It was that connection with God. Sometimes we find ourselves in a dry and weary and desolate place where we're not feeling like we connected to God, where we, we're not feeling like God is there. Even in those times, we still can call out. Because remember, you know, the Lord stands at the door and knocks. You know, he never leaves and forsakes us. Sometimes it's us that kind of walked away from him. And all we got to do is just turn back with outstretched arms and say, say Father, receive me. You know, however, however your short prayer is, but don't don't always know that in our roughest times, God is still there. You know, we don't have to figure things out on our own. The best thing we can figure out is to reach back out to God. So yeah. when things go well in our lives, that's when I think it's the hardest for us because that's when we forget how much we need God. You know, some people, when they have success in their lives and everybody values or, or terms success differently, it might be success in employment it might be success in a relationship it might be improvement in finances it might be getting you know a lot of people you know, a lot of success to things like it might be getting a new car i don't know what it is but when we do those things we tend to say look what i did you know look how i got promoted look 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 at this thing that you know look look how great i am but in those instances we really should be saying look what god did for me look how god favored me look how god blessed me and we start to get um, less, like feeling like we're doing it on our own and we don't need God, which, you know, rehashes a lot of what we talked about in the last chapter. But some of us start to get too casual and we don't pray as much. And, and when we up high, it's, it's just how, how humans are. When we up high, we feel like we don't need to pray as much and we don't need to meditate on the word as much. But then when something happens, when we get down low, when we get that crisis in our life, we, we start that, that reality of where we really fit into the universe comes in and we understand how desperately we need the Lord. And, and we'll start crying out Abba at that time. We start reaching our hands to heaven like, Lord, I need you. I really don't have it all together. And I think if we rehash some of the things we talked about before, if we can find that balance where when we're up high, we continue to pray to the Lord fervently just as much as when we're down low, we continue to pray to the Lord fervently that we don't lose that balance there. But, you know, when we, when we get in a frantic state, when things start to go wrong, we, we start to seek God's help. You know, what one person I'm thinking of right now talks about, you know, when we as black folks and, and, and people that's not rich didn't have it as well. Um, we used to be on our knees tearing and praying all the time. But once we have arrived, we, we feel like we don't need to pray as much. We don't turn to God's holy word for comfort, for security and direction when we feel that we have it under control, you know. But we, we at all times have to learn for the Lord's assurance. We have to understand that he hears us, that he works things out for our good, and that God is faithful all the time. But can we be faithful all the time is the question. God is there. Can we be there? 
He's always ready to hear us, always ready to answer our prayers. Mm -hmm. But we got to go to him sincerely. And I think sincerely is having a reverence for the Lord. It's not saying with a man upstairs. You know, that, that's like putting him on an equal footing and, 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 and being too common with God. I think sometimes we get too common with, with the Lord. Um, but um, we, got, we have to do much better than that. And I think we did already talk about what some situations were that people reach out to the Lord in silent prayer for. Um, so as I go ahead, are there any, any questions or comments that anybody wants to make in that section that we were in? Just anything that comes to mind at all is, is fair game. Okay. Um, if not, let's go into the next section, which talked about poverty of spirit, not discipline. So the author talked about sometimes, you know, um, it's not that we have such a great discipline to pray, but it's the situations that we find ourselves in that we can't control, and it kind of forces us to pray. So, you know, if we're not, it's, it's like if we're not in a situation that is requiring us to, to, to cry out to the Lord, we tend to find ourselves not crying out to the Lord. And it can, you know, this can lead to continued continuous prayer when we are in those dire circumstances. And mm -hmm. so much so that we find ourselves praying and not even realizing it. And it may not even be us, but understand that the spirit within us is, is reaching out for prayer. And an example that I, I can give for that for my personal life is, you know, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, you know, my wife would say, you know, you was praying all night again. And, and you know, I wake up in the morning and my hands would be clasped. And she said, you was mumbling the whole night. And, and I wake up and I'll just be so tired. I wake up tired in those, in those instances. And I, and I know that I, like the night before in, in prayer, I went to bed with, with challenges and things on my mind. And, and I, you know, I just take it that my spirit was reaching out to the Holy Spirit was interceding on, on, on my behalf um, with the Lord and, and it resulted in a, in, a, in a throughout the night prayer. You know, so sometimes we don't know what we need, but in mm -hmm. Galatians 4 and 6, it says, and because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. And so I think the important thing we got to understand is that every part of the Trinity is at work in Christians, you know, filling us with the presence of God as we pray. Um, if we believe in the Son, if we if we be, if we have the Spirit of of the Lord in our hearts, it's going to cause us to cry out, Abba, Father, sure. cry out to the Father. Remember, in our last lesson, we talked about how Jesus, who had control of all, who had power over all, who had, had power beyond imagination, he consistently and regularly reached out to and said, Father, my Father. This, I'm not here on my own accord. I'm here to do my father's will. And, and all the time he would re say, my father, my father, my father. So if he cried out, father, with all of his glory and holiness and, and, and spirituality and, con and his direct connection with the Lord, direct connection with God the Father, why do we feel like as, as believers, as adopted sons of, of God, that we don't need to call out? He gave us the example right there. And as, as adopted sons and daughters of God, it, it gives us the, uh, the same rights and responsibilities. It gives us the same benefits as actual children. We are now his children. And we had a right and we had an ability to cry, to cry out Abba, cry out Father, cry out Daddy, to call God our Father, even as Jesus did. And we can simply liken that to this. If any of you have ever adopted children, or, or, or being in that kind of situation where you might have a, a, um, a, a stepchild, let, let's say it that way, like you, you may have gotten married and, and, and it, you know, the marriage included a child. That child, you take that child on as your own. You, that child has every right to call you father, to call you mother. That child receives all the benefits as if you had birthed that child yourself. You know, there's no distinction made one, you know, once that family comes together, you know, does, is that making sense, sense to everybody? You know, I, you know, I hope, I hope that's clicking. And that's the same thing. When we, when we um, become a, 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 a Romans Christian, if you will, where we believe that, you know, Christ was, was dead, buried, and resurrect, resurrected, and, and we believe on, on Christ as our Lord and Savior, 
we receive all the rights and benefits of being a child of God. And, but the challenge, I think, is that we don't um, apply those benefits. We don't take advantage of those benefits. And, and if we did so, I think all of our lives could be in a, in a much different state. You know, no matter where we are now, there's always room for improvement. And so understand that when, when we're praying, the Spirit is not assisting us to pray. Sometimes it's the Spirit who's actually praying. Sometimes it's the Spirit within us that is interceding and becoming the prayer. You know, so when Jesus prayed, he regularly addressed God, you know, he regularly addressed his father as Abba. And that simply means Papa, it means Father, it means Dad. It, whatever language you want to, or term you want to put to it, that's what it means. And as Abba or Father um, might even be considered a one-word prayer. So, you know, some of us, you've had situations, maybe, I remember um, one time when I thought I was going to be in a car accident, when, when a car looked like it was about to hit me, all I can do is cry out, Father. All I can do is cry out, you know, Jesus, in my distress. That, that oh. one word, I, I took that as, yes, I'm calling on the name of Jesus, but I'm also praying to the name of Jesus. I'm praying right now. All I can get out is this one word, Jesus. And so, and I'm sure all of us have had some sort of situations like that. And so the author points out um, some simple two or three word prayers that he's used. Um, teach me, uh, help me, Jesus, you know, Father, Father, Father. So I know we, we talked about it but uh, early on, but now that we've really started going through the lesson a little bit more, what are some of the simple single or, or double or, 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 or a few word prayers that you all have uttered? You know, what are some things that, that have come out of your, your, your mouth, either out loud or, or silently when you were calling on the Lord when you were in situations? Does anybody have any more they would like to share with us on that? I say, I say, oh, Lord, all the time. And I find that my daughter repeats yes. after me when she um, is doing stuff and she say, oh, Lord. And so that's my simple cry out to God. Okay. Okay. That's mine, too. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I say, have mercy on me, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Amen. 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 I I usually just say Jesus. And 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 see that's what one of the things the ones that the author pointed out. I, I say Jesus as well. I, I say a combination of all the things that were brought up. And what I like is that it's not one way to do it. Mm -hmm. It's it's whatever the situation calls on, and, and as your spirit is connecting with the Holy Spirit as it calls out to the Lord. Whatever comes out because it's reverence, it's asking for the Lord, asking the Lord for help. It's saying, Father, I need you. You know, so whatever those simple words may be, understand that it's it's okay. It doesn't have to be one way. And I think that's one of the barriers that I want to keep attacking as we go through the, this book, is that prayer does not have to be done any one way. As long as we're reaching out with an earnest heart to, to the Lord. The way I do it is going to be different than the way you do it. It's going to be different than the way the next person do it. But do we have that common thread woven through in? Are we reaching out in the best way we can to connect with the Lord, especially in our time of need? And, you know, sometimes we don't know what, what to pray for. And I like how scripture, you know, it takes the pressure off of us because we don't have to sort out exactly what we need. We just didn't know. We just know that we're too weary to figure out what the problem is. Um, and sometimes life just doesn't work. Remember, I think it was two, two chapters ago when we were talking about how it's okay to babble. And for those of you that were not um, in that lesson, what that simply means is sometimes you start out praying and you, you, you got, you know, I'm going to pray for this one thing. And you start praying and next thing you know, you can't get the words right. You might start uh -huh. praying for something <laughs> different than what you started out for. You you might you might have a couple of um, blanks in there where you go uh just keep uh -huh. talking just keep going because what what ends up happening is the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us starts to take over and the words just start to flow and you start praying about things that you didn't intend to pray about you start praying about things that you didn't even really know what, what that that was on your heart you start praying for people that you don't even know what their situation is because the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And, but sometimes we cut it off and we start, well, I feel like I'm babbling. I feel like 
I'm not seeing the right things. No, keep going. Don't stop. And you'll, you'll find on the back side of that, you're going to feel refreshed in a way that you may not have ever felt before because you'll feel the power of the Spirit working through you to draw things out of you that you didn't even know was in there. So never feel um, negative about not knowing what to say. The issue is not doing it. The issue is, it shouldn't be an issue with not knowing what to say. Just start talking. Just start going. Just watch. Don't the, the Lord start to work in your favor and the Spirit start to start to bring things out that you didn't even know was in there. And, and that takes us to Romans 8 and 26, um, where it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought but that the very spirit intercedes with, um, with sighs too deep for words. And what they're saying is, you know, we have a helper as we wait. You know, the spirit helps us in our weakness. The spirit helps us by praying for us. The spirit helps us by interceding for us. And sometimes you're going to have these, uh, these utterings, these, these um, grunts, if you will, these, these words that you can't even make out. And, and, and just be glad that the spirit is praying for us because sometimes when you don't know what to say, the spirit knows what we need. The spirit knows what should be what we should be praying for. You know, we don't know the language of prayer like God knows the language of prayer. As humans, we always trying to make things sound logical. We trying to make things um, sound good. We trying to make things fit in. But look at it like we're foreigners. Like like one of you know, we might go to a foreign land and we don't know the language of that land. We're wandering around. A, helpless we don't know how to speak the language we don't know what to say but in that unknown land in that unknown territory it's going to be the spirit of god that translates for us because you think about you might not know french and you go you go to paris and you have to have a translator you have to find somebody that can speak english and help translate into the to the, to the um, french for you and things like that the holy spirit is doing that for us when we don't know what to pray for so don't let not knowing what to pray for be a reason why you don't pray. Does that make sense? Or, or, am I, or am I the only one who has not prayed sometimes because I feel like I need to pray, but I'm like, I don't know what to pray about. And then I just don't pray yeah. at all. You know, you can't see me raising my hand, but, it, you know, in my openness, I'm just letting you know I, I've struggled with that. Sometimes yeah. I still struggle with it, but I'm learning yeah. to say, I don't know what to pray about, but I'm about to start thanking the Lord going to the you know with thanksgiving praising the lord and all of a sudden a few minutes later the things that i wanted to that I needed to pray about it just started coming out and i didn't even know it was in there so mm -hmm. paul gives us some great examples in his teaching um he talked about unceasing prayer you know prayer without ceasing and that's one of his most frequent descriptions of how he prayed and how he wanted the church to pray and there's several times that he mentions continuous prayer, and I only put down a few of the times, like in Romans 1 and 9, where he said, without ceasing, I remember you always in my prayers, or in 1 Corinthians 1 and 4, he said, I give thanks to God always. You, you know, giving thanks to God always, that's, that's prayer. Um, Ephesians 6 and 18, it, it, when Paul said, pray in the spirit at all times. He didn't say only on Sunday morning, or, you know, the Wednesday Bible class or, you know, Friday when you're driving on the freeway. He said, pray at all times. And then Col Colossians 4 and 2, devote yourselves to prayer. Are we doing that? Are we, are we devoted to, to having a prayer life? One of the things that was really a blessing to me is that movie, um, what was that movie, War Room, where, where, where the lady had that, that prayer closet, and that was that she would go in that closet at certain days and certain times or whatever, and she would devote herself to prayer. Um, and, and if other religions can do that, other, you know, um, people that, that praise God in their own way can find times to devote themselves to prayer. How come we as Christians, and I'm talking about just the body of Christ, not anybody on the call, but how come we don't take it that serious? And let me give you an example. Um, you know, uh, you know, Cassidy might remember this when we were working at, um, at, at Christ on the help desk, you know, we had some people that were of, of Indian descent and we had to set aside a room in the, in the building that they can go to every day at the same time. I think it was noon or, or one or something like that. 
but they would be gone every day at the same time to go do their prayers. And they didn't care what was going on, what the issue with the building could have been on fire. They was going to stop what they was doing and go do their prayer. And then they'll worry about getting out the burning building. They, nothing stopped them from their daily prayer. Well, why don't we as Christians do that? Why don't we have a, a devoted prayer life in, in that way? I'm just talk, like I said, in general, because some people on this call might have that level of devotion. But, but Paul encouraged us to do that in, in Colossians 4 and 2. And then in Romans 12 and 12, it says, persevere in prayer. Persevere in prayer. That, you know, you gotta, you got to be about this prayer life. You got to be strong throughout it. You can't let anything take you off your game, as, as in the previous example. When it's time to pray, it's time to pray. And then 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, simply pray without ceasing. So there's many other examples that, that Paul gave, but he had a consistent theme woven through the things that he talked about in regards to prayer. And it was just pray all the time. Just pray. But do we pray without ceasing? And, and this is a time, you know, for those that want to, you know, we can be open and honest. I don't pray without ceasing. I'm trying to get there. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not there yet, but I know that I need to get there. That's one of the things that these lessons are helping me to see. That I, that's an area that I can improve in. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how you all are fearing, but I'm just being honest about me. I, it's yeah. something that I struggle with, but it's something that I promise yeah. That I'm working on. And I ask you, as you pray in your prayers, pray for me that I get better in my prayer without ceasing. I'm asking for you to intercede on my behalf and something that I know I struggle with. So I'm just gonna thank you in advance because I believe that that, that you're gonna pray for me. So mm -hmm. um Ouch. so anything anybody want to talk about in that in that in those examples about praying without ceasing? Is it challenging? You know, do we find it to be challenging to pray, pray all the time? What are, what are some of the challenges that we come up against? Let's put it that way. Get busy doing nothing. Oh, you said get busy doing nothing. You yeah. Made, you made me think of a person that is driving down the street and they, they rate, revving their engine and they going off fast and then you keep meeting them at the traffic light, at every traffic light. <laughs> you know, racing to do nothing. <laughs> going nowhere fast. <laughs> so... But I think you're right there. Yeah, that's, I think that's a great example. We, we, the way I take it from your example is that, um, you know, we got a lot, of, a lot of life going on. But is that more important than praying? Is the things that we're dealing with in life more important than the prayer that can help us deal with the things that we're dealing with in life? And, I, and I, so I, I agree. I think that was a great example. Any, any others? That's a good one. No I know sometimes I, I'm setting my VCR every Wednesday to watch the program, like clockwork. <laughs> and if I can watch that every Wednesday, I can set a time, set aside a time to pray. That's true. We, you know, we got these things, what they call DVRs now, where we can set it to, mm -hmm. to report whatever we want to at any time, or we can watch it any time. So if 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 our program, let's use the, the television as an example, if our favorite program is already pre-recorded that don't need to stop us from praying anymore you know like like people used to do this thing come on at eight o'clock and that's before dvrs and stuff and all that you know if you missed it you missed it and so people would use excuses like that and i'm gonna say excuse i really mean excuse like that to not pray but even now with, with technology we don't have to have that as an excuse anymore so let let us all um Let's, let us all just try our, our best to do better. And I'm going to challenge each, each and every one of you over the course of this next week, when you find that umption to pray, just pray. There's one person, that I, that, a minister that I know that goes to Steadfast um, Baptist Church. And if you, if you come up to her and you say, you know, minister, I need prayer. And it don't matter if you're at the church. It don't matter if you're walking down the street, if you're in a supermarket. If you're in a checkout line, she's going to stop everything she's doing at that moment and start praying for you right then. Because her, her reasoning is, if I don't do it right now, I'm going to let something interfere and I'm going to forget to do it later. And then I won't pray for you. And I told you I would pray for you. So let's just do it right now. Let's, 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 let's go before the Lord and let us have our prayer. 
And I've seen her do it, and like even with service going on. Somebody mentioned that they need prayer. She, she like, with service going on, that's fine, but we about to pray over here. So she, t- she takes it that serious. And I, and I, I, I use that as an example. Like, if, if I can get to that level, I would, th- I would think I'm doing better, you know? So, um, have you all heard about, heard, somebody is about to say something. Okay. Have you all heard the term breath prayers? Other than reading in our chapter, have you heard it before you got to this chapter? No. Okay. And that's no. fine. That's fine. Because one of the things we deal with is a lot of um, biblical, um, historical uh, terms and facts and such. And so the, the fifth century Greek Orthodox Church, they had a term called breath prayers. And breath prayers are prayers that can be spoken in a single breath. For instance, some of the things you guys have been saying, Lord Jesus, you know, or, or, or Christ, or Son of God, you know, have mercy on me. You know, an, an example here, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. You know, that's some examples from Scripture in Luke 18 and 38, where, where in 18 and 39, where it said, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Or Philippians 2 and 11, where it said, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, that's a breath prayer. And the author shared a breath prayer from, that he, that, you know, that his wife used, where she would say, God, save me, save me from myself. And, and another one she would say is God, you know, she would repeat it, save me from myself. And so I wanted to spend some time with that term because I wasn't sure that, that everybody um, had heard of that term before. So I'm going to shift my screen. And can you see a, a, a yellow background with a guy in the front of it? Yes. Okay, so I got three short videos that I want to share with you that's going to bring breath prayer the concept to life for you. Here's the first one. God is as close as your breath. Back in the century, a prayer practice became popular that today we simply call it breath prayer. It's a contemplative practice, meaning it offers us an opportunity to slow down, mindful of our present, where we are, what's happening in our lives at that moment, where we get a sense that the divine is alongside of us. A breath prayer, as you may have guessed, is tied closely and it is even as simple as breathing. To begin, we answer this question for God. What is it that you want? Follow that with your favorite name for God and let that form your prayer. So it might sound like peace, Jesus. Inhale in that which you want. Exhale out your name for the divine. Mercy. O oh Lord, healing, beloved. Repeat this as you breathe for several times over and see how that opens up an opportunity for you to be appreciative of your present. And then I want you to look at this one. This video explains the ancient Christian practice of entry into God's presence. Through what's called breath prayer, practiced by Christians for centuries. When we first believe the good news about Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes to live in our hearts. We become a new creation and empowered to live the abundant and the good life. The change in our hearts is so remarkable that we immediately recognize God's presence there. We easily find connection with God's presence in the quietness of the outdoors or the stillness of our closets. Singing simple songs that express the truth of God's goodness also helps us focus. We study and meditate on the Word of God to not only gain knowledge but also get the truth to sink into our hearts and we rely upon the Holy Spirit to remind us of to lead us to all truth. Somewhere along the way, we get challenged by the busyness of life and navigating the heartaches and issues that concern us. We may find ourselves not connecting to the Holy Spirit so easily and struggle to turn out as well. This is how the breath prayer can help, much in the same way as memorizing a Bible verse or soaking in worship music. It's a simple word or phrase 
that you keep repeating for a long time at a comfortably slow rate as you breathe in and out for each part of the phrase. It best choose a word or scripture that resonates with your spirit. Perhaps Yeshua or Yahweh. The most well known is Jesus, so God, have mercy on you. This scene shows the problem of what's going wrong and how the prayer works. It's the noise in our minds which is created by overwhelming thoughts and emotions by that cocktail part. Chattering a little loudly, it forms a sound barrier to the spirit's voice in the heart. Hear the breath prayer. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Interrupts the chatter, getting the mind to focus on something that will allow it to quiet down. After a time, the barrier dissolves as our mind becomes a record. It is in the silence of the mind that you can finally rest and abide in God. Cease from working up something and simply gaze at the beauty of the Lord who is at the ground of your being. The point is this. We are only able to walk in the Spirit and be at peace when our minds are listening to God who abides in our hearts. This is the promised rest for the people of God. Try a breath prayer meditation today. Yes, it does bring its challenges, but with some perseverance, I hope you will find it helps bring you a better connection with God and in His presence, live the abundantly good life. Okay, and then check out this one where it's, it's, it's short, but it's, it's a mother. And in the beginning of the video, you can just kind of see the stress stress on her face. If you see me like this, it's because I was stressed. Whew. All right. Hi, Sean here. If you are new. There's something happened. It's connected. So, now that you've seen the Carvana app, any questions? Yes. Hi, Dave Sam. I hope that you will consider subscribing. I post new content every Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And today's video is part of my Christian Mindfulness for Kids series. And we're going to be talking about breath prayers. So if you want to learn how to do a breath prayer with your child, then keep watching. So I have a 10-year-old son and a seven-month-old baby girl. You can probably see her toesies hanging out over the crib over here. I love doing breath prayers myself. It's something that I have just recently gotten into. So you can take a line of scripture, and then you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And if you teach this to children, it helps them to calm down and be present in the moment, especially if you have a child who experiences a lot of anxiety and stress or anger. Really doing a breath prayer can help them focus on God, not only give them encouragement that God is present with them, but just the act of breathing helps calm you down. And so the one that I really love is this. <laughs> from Psalm 146, and I am reading from this cute little board book called I Can Praise God, and it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So, you want to do this one with me? You breathe in, and you hold it. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And you should just be able to fill your shoulders down. So, I do that. Let me grab her real quick. So I'm going to post a download for a free PDF of some other scriptures that I love to do breath prayers with with my kids. So you may want to check that down in the description box down below. And if you want to hear all about um, what it means and my four tips for being having kids. And so we can stop it right here. Um, you know. Yeah. What, so, Gerald. Yeah. yeah go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know that's what I was doing, but I mean, you know, that's what I do when I meditate. I mean, I just, I just meditate, you know, on, on a Bible verse, you know, I just relax and close my eyes and just, you know, breathe in and breathe out and uh, say that verse. I mean, I didn't know that thing called breath prayer, you know, it was just something that I was doing, Amen. you know, when I was, you know, going through, you know, just trying to calm my, calm my mind down, you know, and you know, just meditate. So are you, are you Greek Orthodox? I'm just hassling it with you. Um, the thing. No, nah, not Greek, not Greek or Orthodox. I'm just, I'm just no. hassling it with you. I, I'm just saying that to say, 
you right there in alignment with the Holy Spirit. And, and I want to ask you, when you do that, how, how does it, how does it affect you? You know, um, does it, does it like an example that the women shared with us um, in the last video, she talked about how it calmed her and, and you know, brought, brought her calmness and peace and stuff like that. Is, is, are you feeling the same sort of thing when, when you do it, you know, in your meditation? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it helps uh, relax you and, you know, and then, uh, you know, just, it just centers you, you know, it just centers you and calm you. Amen. Thanks for sharing that with us. Anybody else have any experience with those, with, the, with that meditation um, and using the breath prayer principle? And if, <laughs> go ahead. Somebody was saying something. Okay. Um, if not, then you got a great example that, that, that Cassidy shared from us, whether we term it as meditation or doing breath prayers, it's spending time with the Lord and, and, and it's, it's important. So in, in Cassidy's case, he talked about having a, a particular Bible verse that, that um, he references. You, you may have a particular one. You, there are several that you can use. Um, but however you do it, if you haven't tried it, try it. And, and I promise you, it would, it would change your prayer life. It would change your me your meditation life. It will, and it will change your connection with the Lord. It will bring you to a, to a closer point than you may have been in the past, because it, it helps to focus you and center you and, and relax you. But you're you're being relaxed in the Lord, and being relaxed in the Lord is a whole lot different than being relaxed in the world. You know, mm -hmm. you'll feel that comfort. You'll feel that closeness. You'll feel that protection. You'll you'll feel the presence of the Spirit, and that's different than you know being in, in, in the comfort of a a blanket watching a football game you know what I, it's just different and, and it's you're going to feel so much in a, in a more positive place than you may have realized is even possible so try it definitely try it um let's see what's the next part so one one of the breath prayers that um you know some simple ones you know god save me from myself so do you know you know it says do do you know what we all need? Um, we don't need more organization. Because some people feel like they, if they get just get organized, I'll be a better person. We don't need more money because, you know, a lot of times the money that we have is sufficient. Are, are we being good stewards of it? We don't need more things. Most of us in this day and age have more things than we need by far. The one thing that we do need and continually need is God's grace and God's mercy. We need the mercy of the Lord on our lives at all times. And having that mindset of knowing that we need mercy, it creates a praying heart because it creates a humble heart. See, when you think you have it all together, when you think I have arrived, when you think I'm blessed and highly favored and I'm walking with the angels, when you think that I don't need the Lord, when you think I got it all together, that's a recipe for saying I don't need God's grace and mercy because I got it under control. So consider that in your highest of highs, you still need mercy, just as you did when you were in your lowest of lows. Never forget that we, we rely on, we depend on God's grace and mercy. And having that mindset is going to create such a powerful prayer life. Because even when you, you, you celebrate your most victorious day in the world, you still can go to the Lord in humble prayer, thanking the Lord. And, and having that mercy of the Lord on, on your heart that he allowed you to have that victory. And so a praying life isn't simply having a morning time prayer, you know. It's not a, so much about a routine. It's about slipping into prayer at odd hours of the day. And not because we, we're, we're not disciplined, um, but because we are in touch with our own poverty of spirit. I like that word poverty of spirit because, or that phrase, because it, it signifies that we don't have it all, you know, that, that we are really lacking in spirit. And we realize that we can't even walk through a, small, through, a, through a mall in our neighborhood without the help of the spirit of Jesus. We can't do the basic things that we think is under our own power without the, the Lord our God. What happens, we take for granted that we can see, but what happens if, if that sight just suddenly goes? We take for granted that we can talk, but what happens if that speech suddenly goes? We how many people got up out the bed this morning 
and had arthritis in their knees and couldn't walk and they never had that before. You know, all kinds of things can happen to us at a moment's notice. But when those things happen, understand that it is okay to cry out to, to God the Father. It's okay to cry out, Abba. It's okay to say, Lord, I, I need you. Lord, 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 please help me. It's okay for us to do that. And so that's, you know, we, we about at our hour's time. And that um, brings up the let or concludes the, the, the formal lesson. And so what I would like to do, um, what we, we normally do is go around and give everybody an opportunity to, um, to have any input or feedback that they will want. And I'm gonna put up the final, um, the final slide here. Um, Cause in case anybody wants to, to, to assist the ministry financially, you can do our, um, this is the book that we have, um, A Praying Life. And so if you need the link to the book, it's about $10 on Amazon. But what I've been doing is sending, sending out the chapters as we go along. So most people, um, or the people that don't have the book, I'll be um, sharing chapter eight with you. But, you know, it's always good if you can, can get the copy of the book. It's something about having it in front of you. Um, and so for those of you that want to um, share with us financially, that's our cash app. We have a group me. That, um, I'm, I'm so glad Sister Velma joined uh, last week and she started to communicate with us on group me. Um, so if you want the group me link, I can send that link to you. I, I just need to know. Um, so what I'm gonna, what I want to do right now is I'm gonna stop sharing, and I want to go around the room and just give everybody an opportunity for their their final thoughts. So. Um, Sister Velma, any, any final thoughts on the lesson today? Oh, uh, yeah. I just want to share what I had uh, told you earlier about uh, constant prayer and praying without ceasing. Uh, I had a situation in my family, and it's been now, uh, it's going on four years, but last year, the Holy Spirit told me, God's going to restore your family back to you. Amen. And I kept praying and praying and praying and praying the same prayer, praying and praying. And someone told me, you know, just pray. When you pray, God hear you. You don't have to pray no more. But I just couldn't go with that. And I kept praying and praying and praying and praying about that situation. And last year, back here in August, the Lord answered that prayer for me. There was still yeah. another piece of that puzzle that had to be put together. And the Lord, two weeks ago, closed that door. And it's because, and I know it's because I bugged him and I kept praying. And I kept praying and I kept praying. So I know that prayer works. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, prayer don't work. And I know that God, uh, I put on my Facebook page all the time that God is a mender. Uh, he's a healer and mender of broken hearts. Amen. And through my prayers, he answered. Amen. We thank the Lord for um, blessing you. And, and I, I bless you for being devoted and praying without ceasing on the situation that was in your heart. So we know that the Lord answers prayers. Amen. Um, Sister Maria, any any final comments for the lesson today <laughs> no i just want to say the lesson has been a blessing to me because you know in my prayer life as i began to pray and let pray um i've started with my prayer saying father you know i used to say lord but i've come to the realization that um, i'm on the level that i say father because i feel like i am his daughter and i can come to him asking anything in his will and so i want to be treated like a daughter so mm -hmm. this kind of touched me in that manner amen um sister bert um welcome um we, we glad you had the opportunity to, to, to join with us today any final comments you would like to have yes i'd like to thank you for um inviting me um very um it's wonderful and I needed this, um, so I would definitely be back one in two weeks. And it's wonderful meeting you and your wife. 
at Tabitha and Tara's um, party. Remember. I'm very selective <laughs> about who I, you know, um, pray or Bible or anything like that. So yeah, it was wonderful that you all I, I met your spirit before I even found out, you know, that you were Reverend and maybe Reverend and Reverend. Mm -hmm. I don't know Reverend and Mrs., but thanks so much for inviting me. Amen. You're, you're more than welcome. Amen. Um, Shane, any final comments? No, I don't have anything. Okay, no worries. Um, Lisa, any final comments? Um, no, I don't have any final comments, but I really enjoy um, this class, and I look forward to the next class. Amen. Amen. Uh, Paige, you got anything you want to say? I don't have any final comments. Amen. Okay, no worries. And not to say um, last is least, but uh, Cassidy, thank you for also um, sitting in today. And well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, um, it was it was a great class. I enjoyed it. Amen. Amen. Um, and so, uh, for those of you that haven't been before, we do this um, every two weeks. Uh, we we're, we're going we're going through this book. The book is called um, "A Praying Life." I don't know if it's showing up. If you can see that, but if you need if you need a link to it, um, all you got to do is let me know. I'll send you a link to it. Um, I don't mind sending you a copy out. I just need you to let me know the address to send it to, and I'll, I'll get you a copy sent out. Um, we have a group me that we. We link up on it, and I really like it because we can send ourselves um, or send each other inspiration. We can ask for prayer, and we know that the, the other folks are praying for us. And to me, the group me has just been a blessing. So if you should decide you want to be a part of it, um, you guys just got to let me know, and I'll send you out the link for that. And, you know, that's, that's all we have for today. So we'll have a, a closing prayer. And then we'll sign off for today. And I will get the link sent out because there's some people that um, weren't able to make it today and they contacted me beforehand. And I, I want to make sure I share the link with them. So Father God, we thank you for the time that you allowed us to have on today. Yeah. We thank you for the coming together of, of hearts and minds. We thank you, Lord, for letting us reason through your will and through your way and your word um, by means of this book that we can grow better and stronger and more fervent and devoted in our prayer life. I ask, Lord Jesus, a blessing for each person who attended today, Lord Jesus. Let the place where they rest their head at tonight, Lord, be a place of peace, that they can rest comfortably, that can, they can rest without worry or, or, or strife or, or depression or illness or anything, Lord, that they can have such peace that they, when they wake up tomorrow, they can raise their hands to heaven and simply say, thank you, Lord, for another day. Lord Jesus, put an option in their heart to pray more. Put an option in their heart, Lord, to spend more time reaching out to you. Let them, Lord Jesus, understand that even the small prayers carry a lot of weight, that it doesn't have to be over the top and overly abundant, but it can be simple things, Lord Jesus, that you're just standing there waiting with your arms open, and we just have to walk into it. So we honor you, Lord, and we bless you, and we ask that you keep each of us until such time as we meet again. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray together. Amen. 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 Amen.